Hello, and welcome to our uh, program today, uh, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. This program is a, uh, a byproduct of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our cases, uh, and I am coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our cases uh, today come from the Stevenson Cancer Center and NIH Designated Cancer Center. It's a case today of a 55-year-old woman with abnormal vaginal bleeding and a somewhat bulky uh, uterine mass on ultrasound. Um, she undergoes a curatage, and this is the uh, resultant uh, surgical sample that's submitted for our, our evaluation. Uh, we can see immediately at low power, this is not normal endometrium. There's a, a very pink appearance to the tumor, uh, to the lesion, a mixture of glandular elements, uh, and some uh, pink and bluish uh, stromal elements. As we look at, at some of these glandular elements, they don't seem to have too much in the way of atypia in terms of either architecture uh, or even to any great degree in terms of cytology. Uh, we can see their fairly low columnar uh, epithelium. Um, we can see the uh, uh, glands and uh, tissues that are formed uh, somewhat uh, leaf-like uh, patterns. Um, and as we look around, we can see that there's uh, really no significant uh, atypia to the uh, epithelial uh, component. But this is clearly a biphasic neoplasm. Uh, it has, uh, as we can see at low magnification here, a somewhat more cellular zone immediately beneath uh, the epithelium and surrounding these glands, and then uh, trailing off into a more pink uh, hyalinized uh, stroma centrally, um, a pattern uh, that uh, is uh, uh, fairly characteristic for this lesion. Uh, so uh, the pinkish tissue here does not appear to be smooth muscle, uh, and it appears we've got a very delicate vasculature. Uh, these uh, cells in the stroma are not highly atypical, uh, but as we look around, we can uh, see that there are occasional mitotic figures in some of these areas um, going along with uh, a proliferative uh, process, um, and then maybe some secondary uh, reactive surface changes on top. So uh, biphasic neoplasm, uh, here's another area. We can see a little bit of squamous metaplasia associated with this lesion. So there are a number of biphasic neoplasms that are uh, present and occur in the lower GYN tract. Um, on the benign side of things are the atypical adenomyoma or Mazur's polyp. Uh, even just endometrial or endocervical polyps uh, can have a biphasic appearance, of course. Uh, and then uh, more uh, uh, typically adenomyoma or adenofibroma, both of which are fairly uh, uncommon. On the more malignant side of things, uh, we have Mullerian adenosarcoma. Uh, which I believe is what we're dealing with today. We also have carcinosarcomas. And then uh, the, on the malignant side, we have other uh, uh, more uncommonly encountered tumors uh, that may be more and more prevalent outside of the uh, lower GYN tract. Germ cell tumors sometimes going to have that appearance, or totally lytic tumors or sex cord stromal tumors. Uh, even uterine tumors with sex cord-like elements, uh, Wilms tumor rarely embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma can have some features uh, resembling this uh, lesion, and endometrial stromal sarcoma can occasionally entrap uh, benign glandular tissues as well. Uh, so this is an example of Mullerian adenosarcoma, which is a tumor that occurs in a very broad age range, but is mostly concentrated in peri- and postmenopausal women. Uh, extra uterine occurrences are possible and uh, typically are associated with a history of endometriosis, uh, sometimes uh, Prior radiation can also be an inducement or a risk factor for the development. Both high-grade and low-grade low -grade variants are uh, uh, possible. Uh, our case today, a low-grade variant, uh, but the high-grade variants typically have a greater than 25% uh, evidence of a more sarcomatous overgrowth uh, uh, type of pattern. And the prognosis in these tumors, of course, is dependent upon depth of invasion and uh, especially the prevalence of uh, high-grade features. Uh, the latter can sometimes be uh, highlighted with the use of KI-67 index and uh, P53 stains, which may uh, be markers of uh, more aggressive uh, behavior. 
So uh, that uh, summarizes nicely our case for today, Mullerian adenosarcoma of the uterus. Not a common entity encountered, uh, but something to be aware of, and uh, certainly the differential for biphasic tumors is important. Well, if you've enjoyed that uh, little brief uh, run through on this uh, entity, uh, we hope that you'll comment below on times you may have encountered it uh, or features you've seen in your experience. Uh, and certainly we invite you to subscribe so that you won't miss uh, future offerings that will be uh, released uh, in the coming days and weeks on our channel. Uh, as always, you're welcome to reach out to me directly uh, uh, through the comments or at uh, either of the uh, 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 venues uh, noted there. And so until next time, thanks for joining us.